Hey, what's up, y'all? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a great Easter weekend. What a powerful just reminder of um, of who Jesus is and what he did for us. I look forward to Easter every year, but you know what? In all honesty, it's not something we should celebrate once a year. Um, as much as I love Easter, it really is something we need to celebrate daily of just that reminder of the cross and really what the empty tomb means for your life and for mine and what we get because of it. But hey, we are past Easter. We are going to continue our journey through the book of Luke. Today, we are going to find ourselves in one of the most skipped over sections of scripture there is. In fact, this is probably one of the reasons a lot of people don't get into the Bible is because they hit these spots and give up. And so where we are is actually the genealogy of Jesus. So there's really two that are recorded. There's one in the start of Matthew and then here in Luke 3, now, now, genealogy is incredibly important because you know what? There's power in the details. When you really look through the genealogy, the names and who it is, man, it is incredible what it shows us. And, and so we're going to look right here in Luke, um, in Luke 3, 23. We're just going to start. We're barely even going to touch the surface. And, and see, here's the, the difference. You see, the one in Luke traces Jesus all the way back to Adam. Um, the first man, which is incredible. Um, Matthew traces Jesus back all the way to Abraham, which was kind of like just to track for the Jewish people because Matthew was written to the Jewish people. Luke was more written uh, for Gentiles. And so this tracks Jesus all the way back to Adam. And so here we're going to jump in and find ourselves in 23, where it simply says, Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years of age being the son, and in parentheses, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli. Okay, now there's a lot in that one verse. I know it didn't seem like much. Probably not going to get that on your coffee cup. That's all good. Hear me out. So Jesus began his ministry when he was about 30 years of age. So there's a lot right there. I know there's a lot of questions like, well, why did Jesus start his ministry at 30? Like, why didn't he start at birth? Why didn't he start at 12 when he was in the temple chilling with the religious leaders? Um, so that points back to the Levites. So the Levites were the priests for the Jewish people. And ultimately, at the age of 20 and 25, they had a probationary period until about 30 um, when they could step into being a priest, into their ministry. And so what that does is that points to Jesus. Jesus um, served three roles. He was king, prophet, and priest. Um, all those three wrapped up in one. And so this kind of uh, points to Jesus' um, priestly genealogy, like that, that Jesus is our high priest. Um, you know, Hebrew says we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize. Like Jesus is that high priest. It traces him, kind of puts him in with the Levites. And so there, there's just an important detail there. And then it goes on to say, being the son in parentheses, as was supposed of Joseph. Now we know why that's there. Um, yes, he was Joseph's son, kind of, right? He was God's son, Joseph didn't really get to, you know, have a part in that, um, but Joseph raised him as his own. And so it's kind of like a, a little note, like, don't forget about the birth. Don't forget about the special circumstances in that birth. And so um, there's really a lot when you, when you dig in. And so I hope over the next few weeks as we jump through this that you'll go with us and, and dig in with us. But one thing that stands out to me that I have for you today it's simply this. What's your genealogy going to look like from here on? What's the legacy that you're going to leave for your kids, your kids, kids, your kids, 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 and on and on and on? Or let me ask you this. Are you the first link in the chain? You look at it as a chain. Um, and every one of us um, that believe in Jesus kind of completes that chain. You know, are you the first link? Are you the first one in your family to proclaim faith in Jesus? Um, and so it's really important to think about because, you know, at the end of the day, for our genealogies, our family tree and the future, who are you investing in for the future? I think you have your, your family, of course, but I'm referring more to your discipleship. We have to think generationally about our discipleship. Who discipled you and who are you discipling? And so that's another way to kind of look at it. So not only do you have your family that really um, your family needs to know Jesus. And it's your role to, to lead them to Jesus, but also looking at discipleship generationally and discipling somebody who will disciple somebody who will disciple somebody. Um, 
So anyway, that's what we got for today. Hey, we are excited tomorrow and Thursday, big test at Indianapolis. You can chime in on Peacock. Chuck and I will both be there praying with the guys, being there to connect with the people. So excited for what the month of May has in store. We can't wait to reveal some of those things to you coming up. Have a great day.